Schneider Electric have just done something that, on the face of it, feels like it shouldn't really be possible. They've launched a surge protection device for commercial and industrial installations that connects directly to the bus bar, and it doesn't need a dedicated MCB. Straight away, that raises some big questions. No breaker. How is it protected if it fails? Is it compliant? And just as importantly, what are the limitations? Most surge protection devices used in commercial installations today rely on an upstream MCB. That device isn't there to protect the SPD. It's there to protect the installation if the SPD fails. And SPDs usually fail as a short circuit, either after a single large surge event or after repeated smaller surges over time. When that happens, the MCB operates and takes the SPD safely out of circuit. The problem is in commercial installations, you don't want the upstream protective device device operating just to clear a failed SPD. If that device trips, you're potentially causing a power failure across the entire distribution board, which is clearly unacceptable in commercial and industrial environments. So that's why SPDs are normally given their own local MCB. If the SPD fails, only the SPD is isolated and the rest of the board stays live. In domestic installations, we've recently seen a move away from dedicated MCBs, with SPDs relying on internal solder fuses. But even there, you can't rely on the upstream service fuse to protect the SPD. It's there to protect the installation. In commercial systems, the upstream protective device could be much larger, so relying on it simply isn't an option. This is where Schneider's new approach comes in. These new SPDs include internal protection that's designed to operate before the upstream protective device, provided the upstream device is 63 amps or greater. That's the key condition that allows Schneider to eliminate the dedicated MCB and connect the SPD directly to the bus bar. Now let's talk about what this means on site. On many commercial installations, once you've sacrificed an outgoing way in the board for an MCB, there's still nowhere left to physically fit the SPD itself. So in practice, the SPD ends up installed in a separate external enclosure, or you have to specify an incoming expansion board. That's exactly what we've done here in the studio with the previous generation of Schneider SPDs, where the MCB and SPD were combined. It's a neat solution, but it still means extra enclosures, extra wiring, more terminations, and more installation time. There's also another issue with the traditional approach, because the SPD is on its own MCB. There's always the risk it can be accidentally switched off or isolated during other work and never turned back on. The board looks fine, uh, but the installation has no surge protection. With this new generation of Schneider SPDs, all of that goes away. There's no dedicated MCB taking up an outgoing way, no need for an external enclosure or expansion board, and no risk of the SPD being inadvertently switched off. The device connects directly to the bus bar, and the entire solution fits neatly inside the distribution board using just three modules, even on a three-phase system. Less wiring, less hardware, and a much cleaner install. The Schneider Act Isobar and KQ distribution boards are some of the most popular commercial boards out there, installed in thousands of installations. The good news is that these new surge protection devices are backwards compatible, which means they can be added easily to existing boards, not just new builds. Let's take a look at how you fit one into an Isobar board. And as with any SPD, it should be installed as close as possible to the incoming device. In this example, that's meant moving an MCB for an existing outgoing circuit to create the correct position. And the SPD simply clips into the board, and one of the big advantages of the ISOBAR system is the plug-in neutral. This means the only wiring required is a connection to the earthing terminal. That earth conductor is critical. It must be a minimum of six square millimeters, kept as short as possible with no loops and not exceed 0.5 meters. Once that's done, it's just a case of sliding the ISOBAR tabs to make the connection to the bus bar, re-energizing the board, and that's it. Job done. To bring this all into perspective, here's the Acti-9 board we installed in the studios a few years ago. At the time, we had to add the ink coming expansion box just to house the SPD module which included the combined MCB. That meant moving the main switch, adding the interconnecting wires and fitting extra hardware just to make sure everything works. It's a solid installation but it's also a good example of how much additional kit and effort was involved with the previous approach. With the new director bus bar SPD all that disappears. No expansion box, no MCB and no reworking of the incomer. And in today's connected world it also frees up space for metering and communication or as we like to call it flexibility. Installation into a KQ distribution board is very similar with one key difference. You'll also need to make a connection to the neutral bar as well as the earth. Both the earth and neutral conductors must be a minimum of six millimeters squared and again they should be kept as short and direct as possible with no unnecessary loops. Once those connections are made the device clips into place, connects to the bus bar and the board can be powered back up. And if you've been a bit careless with the instructions scan the QR code on the device and you'll land on the product page. A three-phase SPD 
like this is built around metal oxide varistors or MOVs connected between line and neutral. These are the sacrificial elements and they're housed in plug-in cartridges so if they fail they can be replaced without changing the whole device. Failure is clearly indicated by the status flag on the cartridge. Green means healthy, red means the cartridge has failed and needs replacing. In the base of the module there's also a gas discharge tube connected between neutral and earth. That provides a controlled discharge path for higher energy surge events. Together this provides type 2 surge protection at the incoming supply rated up to 40 kilo amperes and also type 3 protection for sensitive equipment installed within 10 meters downstream of the distribution board. The devices are suitable for use on all common earthing systems including TNCS, TNS and TT making them appropriate for a wide range of commercial and industrial installations. On the ISOBAR SPD version there's an additional feature that's particularly useful in commercial environments, a set of volt free dry contacts. These change state if a cartridge has failed or been removed from the base and can be connected to indicator lamps or fed into a BMS or monitoring system for remote fault indication. Throughout this video we focus mainly on the challenges of three phase installations but Schneider aficionados will know that both the Acti9, ISOBAR P and KQ ranges are also available in single phase type A configurations. The good news is that these new surge protection devices are available in single phase versions as well designed to fit those boards with the same direct to bus bar connection approach. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to explore the full range in more details and if you're new to the Acti9 system you can learn more about it and some of its class leading features in the video on screen now. As always drop any questions you've got about these new devices in the comments or let us know if there are any other surge protection myths you'd like us to debunk in future videos.